You're welcome back to the key points on TV3 and 3FM, as well as 3news.com. You can send your messages to our WhatsApp line 055 369 8789. Our hashtag is hashtag the key points. Now, this week, the president broke ground for an ambitious healthcare uh, infrastructure drive. And this is the commencement of the uh, ambitious Agenda 111 project, which will provide healthcare access to Ghanaians. It uh, provides for some 101 district hospitals, seven uh, regional hospitals, including the rehabilitation of that in the Western region, as well as um, three psychiatric hospitals. So in terms of whether this is possible or not, just to take you back, it was not too long ago, I think in 2020, when the president announced that they will be building 88 district ho hospitals. That didn't happen. Now we have uh, some 101 uh, hospitals which will be built within, guess what, 12 to 18 months. Is that a realistic timeline to deliver these hospitals, knowing that the Eurojet projects have taken well over eight years and still counting? My guests uh, this morning are Mr. Eduji Tamaklu. He is an NDC legal team member. We will also have in studio the GME uh, General Secretary, Dr. Justice Youngson, as well as the NPP's Deputy Communications uh, Director, uh, Mr. Kamal Dean Abdullahi. We'll also have the National President of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. All of that coming up this morning. But thank you very much, Mr. Tameklu, for joining us in studio. How are you? Good morning, Jiva, and uh, good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, All I'm right. Okay, this morning. Great. Yeah. So, government has uh, rolled out this infrastructure agenda. I saw a post put up by Dr. Baumia trying to uh, poke at the NDC, saying that the NDC is the party of the impossible, that everything cannot happen. Uh, government is determined to roll out and implement this uh, agenda. In terms of the objective, 12 to 18 months, should we not wait and see if this will be delivered? Um, Jiva, ordinarily, um, I should not be responding to the jocular comments from the Vice President relative to these serious matters of health infrastructure. Look, you see, let's elevate. When you occupy a position like the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, you need to elevate the conversation from the, the, the usual sloganeering that, oh, for NDC, is a question of impossibility. What we are looking at is the question of credibility in delivering health infrastructure. Now, our point is this. If you pick the 2016 MPP manifesto, which became the social contract between the MPP and the good people of this country, under health, they had indicated that with the benefit of power, they were going to build health infrastructure, that is hospitals, in districts without hospitals. Mm -hmm. That is what brought about the 88. So when that promise was made, 2017 budget, no mention of it. 2018, no mention. 2019, no mention. 2020, COVID came. Then on 25th of April 2020, if you recall, in one of the president's you know, addresses to the nation during the lockdown, it was then that the president indicated that they were going to build 88 hospitals. Of that, they will build two psychiatric hospitals, among other regional hospitals in the new regions. That was when the conversation started. Then we indicated that, look, in your 2016 manifesto, you had already indicated that you were going to build hospitals in districts without hospitals. So this is nothing new. In any case, you have even delayed in the takeoff because you are in your fourth year, 2020, without even putting block or mortar on the ground, yet alone to start. So we said, look, Mr. President, it's good you come out with some of these programs. But be realistic with the good people of this country. Because already, 
the NDC administration has started several of these hospitals. When you came, you decided that you were going to do audits of these projects. And so the projects had already stalled. Formina, Bekwai, and several other places had stalled. So we said, look, instead of starting this, complete what the NDC has started so that we can move on. Before the NDC left, somewhere around November, December, we got Parliament to approve VAMED to construct about 12 polyclinics. Mm -hmm. Focus on delivering those ones that people can use. You do not wait for COVID to come and now come and speak to Ghanaians that, look, I want to do this at this point. That is not visionary leadership. Right. So that was how the co uh, conversation mm -hmm. we situated it. Mm -hmm. It is not a question of NDC saying that it is impossible to build. Why? You can promise 111 and deliver 20. So the, the whole conversation ought to be situated very well. Okay. I'll, but, I'll come back to you on that, uh, Mr. Tamaklu. But let's take a quick break and uh, hear what the president has been saying about this. The building of these new healthcare facilities. My vision is to help make Ghana the center of excellence for medical care in West Africa by 2030. This we will achieve by investing more in the development of our healthcare infrastructure, mapping our regional health facilities to specialization, as well as upgrading selective facilities in our regional and teaching hospitals. The president there speaking about Agenda 111. I think the critical thing also to be raised is that uh, these are 100-bed hospitals and they will cost uh, some $16.88 million. And a commencement fee of some $100 million has um, been applied for the start of these hospitals. But ultimately, all these hospitals together will cost more than what, some $1.7 billion. And that's also another extra expenditure to bring in. Let me bring in and welcome Dr. Justice Youngson, who is the uh, General Secretary of the Ghana Medical Association. Dr. Youngson, thank you very much for joining us on Key Points. Good morning. Jifa, most welcome. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure being on your show. Great. So there's uh, the whole debate about uh, government's delivery of these uh, hospitals. Are these realistic timelines? The president said 18 months to deliver uh, some 101 hospitals. For now, we know 88 are assured because the land and the processes for uh, getting the procurement and all that is up and, and running. Okay. Tifa, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not too sure if I will need a bit of clarity from you. I think by my understanding, the 18 months starts from the day a particular project starts. Exactly. Of course. If that is it, then I think it's doable. I was part of a private sector group that developed the Ghana Infectious Disease Centre in the midst of COVID, 100-bed capacity hospital. We were able to do it under three months. If the country is committed to improving the health of the people, then I think within 18 months, we should be able to deliver on a project if we really want to. You are building a hospital for the people. How long would you want to wait? If in terms of structural development, the professionals are saying that you can put up a structure in one and a half years, for the people in a certain district that do not have any health facility to serve them, to get access to health, then I think it's doable. The key thing here is the commitment on the part of the state itself. Because many a time, sometimes you see developments happening in terms of construction, and then at some point it's sort of uh, abandoned or you, you, the project halts and you don't know when we are going to go back and they talk about variation and what have you. Elsewhere, when a project is ongoing, the contractors will go to sites. They don't leave the site till the project is over. So I think the key thing here is the commitment. And this is something that we cannot negotiate on. But Reason does government really have the commitment because We've had other hospital projects, and Mr. Edward G. Tamaklo referred to the Eurojet Hospital, some of which are still, you know, under construction or work is still ongoing. Some need equipment and all that. He referenced another 
um, you know, approval to build polyclinics, for instance. We have all these projects dotted all over the place. Why should we be building new ones? Well, in terms of the commitment, unfortunately, I don't speak for government, <laughs> and uh, I cannot answer. But for me as a citizen, I will urge government to ensure that the necessary commitment is actually given to every one of these projects so that we are able to do it. In terms of why we should do it, or why 88, I'm not so keen about the number per se, but if you look at it, we have well, about 260 districts. So if you have 88 of them without any health facility, obviously there is something wrong. You can't have almost a third of your population not having access to health facilities when it comes to their basic health care. Mind you, the district hospitals actually sit at the pinnacle of our primary health care delivery. And that is what we will usually be looking at when we are talking about universal mm -hmm. health coverage and what have you. And our constitution enjoins the state to ensure that everybody has access to basic health care. For which reason, if you have a third of your districts without the district hospital that we have all agreed that at least every district should have a hospital, then obviously there is a need to do them. I'm not here to justify government's decision or not, but for us as a professional body, our commitment is that, look, we will push any government whatsoever to ensure that the people of Ghana have the right health care delivery at all times. Mm. For us, that is it. It is not about party A, party B, no. It's about the people. We need to have access to basic health care. And that one, I think, no matter what, it is non-negotiable. Sometimes those of us in Accra, we make mistakes, or in the big cities. You may think that, well, once you are here and you have access to some good health facilities, that's fine. But one day, you could find yourself in any of these districts. And uh, for whatever reason, you may need to have some sort of health needs that will have to be attended to. At that point, it may be an emergency. But for whatever it is, if you don't get some quick intervention, that could spell doom for you. So making sure that the people have access to quality health care, I think it's a commitment that the state cannot afford to lose sight of. And whether it's party A, party B, party C, whoever is in power at all times will have to ensure that we have access to good quality health care. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And that's Dr. Justice Youngson. He's the GMA's uh, General Secretary. We have via Zoom Mr. Bright Emisanyako, who is the National President of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. We are also joined now by Mr. Kamal Dean Abdullahi. MPP's uh, Deputy Communications Director. You're welcome, uh, Mr. Abdullahi. So I have to launch into you. Why do we have to, you know, invest, what, another 1.7 billion in hospitals when we have many others that are yet to be completed? Polyclinics, hospitals, chips compound, which also need equipment. These are funds that probably could have finished all of these. And then we can move on. Well, thank you very much. And um, I must apologize to viewers for being a bit late. Um that I underestimated the traffic situation. Um, good morning to you, good morning to the General Secretary, as well as my good friend, Ebigi Tamaklo. Difa, I'm happy we have a health expert sitting with us here, um, who would agree with me that provision of health is the actual wealth that we need in society. And that being said, infrastructure in the health sector is a process one must embark on to be able to achieve it to the fullest. And sometimes even not to the fullest, but at least to a level where we shall all appreciate or we all appreciate. If you ask a simple question, why do we have ongoing projects? And instead of making sure that we have all these projects completed, commissioned, and of course, put in use before thinking of new ones, okay? We're not doing that, but rather we're adding to the existing ongoing projects 
new projects that we're going to start to build. Difa, I have always said that provision of infrastructure is a going concern, especially in a developing nation as we have. One cannot say that we are adequate when it comes to staffing in the health sector. One equally cannot also say that we are adequate when it comes to infrastructure in the health sector or provision in the health sector. Since the inception of the fourth Republican constitution, let me take it from there. Of course, we could even go beyond that when you have history, but let's take it from the inception of the fourth Republican constitution. There has been attempts by, by governments upon governments, okay, or governments after governments, to ensure that the needs of the people are met in terms of the provision of infrastructure. That has brought us this far. I don't know, I, maybe my colleague... Um, well, I'm not exactly um, sure you're answering my um, question. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Maybe my colleague on the other divide had mentioned maybe the Eurojet project, And then for uh, one other... Very well. uh, the politics These are some project. of the... I am aware that we came to meet some handing over notes, okay? After we won 2016. 2017 when we were sworn in, handing over notes were given to us. The health sector, we had inherited series of projects that were ongoing. Some never even started at all. But yet funding was actually sought for them and gotten. Question is, where are we with such projects today? There are those who are out there saying that we are launching Agenda 111 when in fact the projects we have even inherited within the health sector, okay, are not completed. But that's not a lie. Trust me, that's not true. No, but that's not a lie. The, Very are, economical yeah. with the truth. I am going to give you the statistics. It's simple. It's here. On the Eurojet, for instance, we're talking of Chifu Praso, for instance, which is part of the project. It is commissioned as we speak now, since last November. We're talking about um, Nsoko, completed and commissioned since last November 2020. We're talking about um, TEPA, completed and commissioned since last November 2020. That is under the Eurojet project. You see, once so when I say people come to serve us with some half truth or half, I don't know, being economical with the truth to us, of course you would understand. Okay, but, That's we what I'm saying. but we are told that there is also a hospital in Tredia, the very place that uh, the commissioning happened, and that hospital has not also been completed. I, I have not said that entirely we have done Aha, everything. So my, my, I think is the that, conversation and, and I, is about those yes. that are incomplete. So Difa, the point is that if you have one hospital or a particular hospital in a particular jurisdiction that is not completed, it gags you or stops you from initiating a monumental project like this that would come to help our society, does it stop you? It should not stop you, but the, question, but the question is that why not con continue what is still no. hanging? Ziva. I'm not saying infrastructure is not important, but if monies have been borrowed for these projects, let's complete Ziva, the, I'm not, the I'm process. Not sure, I'm not sure there is a communication out there that these projects, we have a hindrance and that we cannot complete them. No. What I'm saying is that it is a going concern. Some have been completed. We are on the course of making sure that the series of these projects are completed. I think there's Look, also another I, hospital at uh, Afari. That too. Yeah, you can mention two or three. Some yeah. of uh, they are ongoing. They are at various stages of completion. But you see, the government of the day sat down to say, "Look, we have had all these projects, but how many districts do we have in this country?" Okay, so this is about the, the, of the so matter. this is about the districts that don't have hospitals. Very well. Relevance of the matter is that we've had this. If Tepa has, other districts don't have. So the, for instance, maybe there has been some clinic that is in the orphan. Government says, no, let's upgrade it to a status of a hospital or a district hospital. Let us be able to do that. Then government looks into the, if you like, into matters that are going on in the health sector and say that, look, all these 250 something districts that we have in this country, over 88, running to about 111, do not have hospitals. Is it critical and essential for us to provide such facilities? Then someone says, no. The argument is that we've not even completed some of them. Why are we having this? I think with a greater respect, we are a developing country. We need some of these critical, if you like, um, uh, uh, amenities. Okay, you know, so for you, so move. for government, the focus is on the areas that don't have hospitals, irrespective of the other projects that are. That is complete. exactly what we're okay. doing. And, and, and I, I want us to give credit to the government of the day that, look, Anyone who sits somewhere to say that, look, and I can go on and on and on, there's a plethora of 
projects that okay, we have so completed you, you, and we can give okay, them. So I'll, but I'm I'll saying hold that your you yes, hold your horses. Right. I think the, the fundamental point has been made. Okay. And I, I know that Edgy will take you up on that. But let me go to um, the president of the uh, coalitions in health, Mr. Bright Emisa. Good morning, sir, and thank you for joining us on uh, key points. For you, what's the outlook? Do you see us, um, you know, completing these in good time to serve the communities that are underserved? Thank you very much, Jifa. Good morning. Good morning to the panelists and uh, good morning to your, your viewers. I think uh, we, we are having a very good uh, conversation this morning, and I like the way it's going so far. The whole issue is about the infrastructure gap at the primary health care level. Here we are talking about the, the district um, level largely. And if um, the, the, the government wants to bridge the gap at that level, we are all for it. The coalition of NGOs in health has always said um, um, this, that um, primary health care has not been fully accessible um, in the country. So when the president in his first tenure of office even came, and then we saw this in the, uh, in the manifesto, and for that matter, he made a, a, a strong pronouncement about it in the, in the second tenure. Then we were so happy, we applauded him. And then we'll continue to applaud him for even um, recognizing this and then coming out boldly to get these um, um, gaps uh, bridged. However, our concern has been one, the commitments and then the cost of, of, the, of the project. So the, the timelines of 18 months, just like we are all discussing and looking at, if you start any project now, you break the ground and then you start laying blocks, you give yourself um, a month or two, three, and then the funding is available, then it becomes achievable. But what do we see now? What we see now is there is some seed money, let's say about 600 million Ghana cities. That is going to take care of the whole 88 for now. Like you see, I mean, they've done um, a lot of feasibility studies on the 88 and um, remaining about 23, which has um, land issues and so on and forth. So we're still even talking about the 88. Uh, are we able to ascertain that the seed money could do this to its final completion at the end of the 18 month period? And if you make projections into the future, looking at when this tenure of office of the president is, is going to end, and then you make physical projections into it, then it, you don't get so convinced that it is achievable within the period that um, it is given. OK, so, so Mr. Emisa, I, I think that's one point you make. The other point I want to bring to your attention is in the president's speech, he indicated that this is an opportunity to employ uh, what, some more than 20,000 healthcare professionals. As of last year in 2020, we know that some 20,000 nurses are yet to get on government payroll. And with the doctors, I dare say it's about 1,000 because we have some 450 foreign doctors who had complained of not getting into the public service. And so I'm sure there are, there are others. I'm just wondering, with that kind of background, these hospitals will we really uh, pick up our healthcare professionals? Yes, um, building about 111 ho hospitals is a huge project that could bridge the, the, the uh, employment gap as well in the health sector. That I perfectly agree that a huge number of um, um, people are going to be employed. That is why we've always um, applaud him for this um, uh, um, pronouncement. But are we going to see it in reality within this, his tenure? Our discussion should be focused on that. We are not saying it is not feasible, it is not achievable. Everybody will be able to achieve it when the, the financial commitments are there. So a lot of these health workers are there. They need work to do. People need to work. We agree. But in what record time is it going to, 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 to come into, into frustration? When do we see this happening? Are we counting like the, the first one that he, he, he break grounds for? Are we looking at it as getting to completion in 18 months from uh, last Tuesday to the next 18 months? No, it's from the, yes. it's from the day a project begins. Exactly, exactly, my sister. So let's, let's look at the amount that is available now. 
So if you look at the amount that is available now, then you could agree with me that from the day the project begins, like the first one the president um, cut short for, should be completed in the next 18 months. That means one out of the 600 million Ghana cities given can be completed uh, as such. But I hear the discussion to be, it is a, it is a money to be given uh, to the contractors for mobilization for all 88. So if the project is going to take that cue and that angle of giving mobilization, and then they wait, the contractors look for funding and on those things, our fear is that by the end of the president's tenure, they might have raised a lot of structures to a certain um, um, percentages that are not completed and okay. might have not done us a lot of good. All so right. if they look at putting them in phases and then getting them completed in, in those phases, that one becomes more realistic than getting them open and say 18 months. One Yes, of course, it could even be completed before 18 months when the budget starts and there's money. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Emisa. You can hold on there because uh, we'll get some thoughts from Dr. Youngson, particularly on the employment of healthcare professionals, because that's uh, a major issue. But Mr. Tamaklo, I know that you want to raise some issues, particularly on the funding. So go ahead. Yes, Jifa. Uh, it's important that, again, and, and I'm happy that um, the president of the coalition of coalition NGOs in health had brought a very interesting perspective to the conversation, which has to do with funding. As we speak, we are being told that an amount of 100 million from the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund has been earmarked for the start of this project. So that if you have 88 projects against $100 million, we are effectively talking about a million dollar or so for each of these 88 projects for the takeoff, correct? Yes. It's more than 88. Yes. But no, no, no. For now, now it's you are 88 because, on 88 that's, because that's, where that's where they have land. the land. Essentially, yeah. 87. Good, 87. Okay, 87. Now, if you pick this 87 against $100 million, then we are dealing effectively with one point something, one million, point something million for each. <laughs> now, we are told that the cost of one is $16.8 million, $12 million for the fiscal infrastructure, and $4 million for the equipment and tooling. So if at the project completion, uh, uh, the start, you are just getting only one million, and when the question is put to government officials, that the remaining, because if you are doing 88 times 16, we are looking at a little over one billion dollars. If you are only giving 10% of the money for commencement, question is, the remaining amount, how are we going to fund it? Now, when you ask government officials, their response is that it is going to be three budget cycles. Now, three budget cycle is 12, 12, 12. And so that already takes us beyond 18 months. That <laughs> already, per, three budget cycle, <laughs> that's effectively mean that we are way beyond the, you know. Now, if we are taking 100 million, okay, from the Ghana Infrastructure Fund, and you are going to do this in 18 months. Remember that the proceeds into the Ghana Infrastructure Fund are principally from, you know, petrol. 20 pesos from petrol when you purchase, 2.5% VAT, among other things. That is the, the, the proceeds into the Ghana Infrastructure Fund. So if that is going to be the principal source of funding, already there is going to be a credibility challenge relative to funding. The reason why I make this point is that under the NDC administration, when we decided to roll out this health infrastructure, and knowing the challenges that come with funding, we decided that, look, we're going to do borrowed funds to complete this project. Because we learned from experience, the Eurojet projects. When Eurojet, Kufo brought them, they were supposed to bring money to complete the project from Egypt. Then 2011, if you recall, the Arab Spring in Egypt, stalled the funding for those projects. So it has to take the Mahama administration to get backless into the conversation. That is how can we're able to even complete the war and other projects because then we got backless providing funding for it. It took eight years to get that funding arrangement completed. So we have the benefit of experience. And we are saying that, look, 
You cannot roll out such massive infrastructure projects when you do not even have dedicated funding. I'll give you a classic example. In fact, do you know that if you give this kind of project without dedicated funding, when the contractors even go and get money to do this project, at the end of the day, the interest on delay payments alone will take the project cost out of everything. So it is not a question of you can do it or you cannot do it. Okay, so People are simply asking you that if you are even saying that the 100 million, I am doing five at a go, within 18 months, 100 million dollars for five projects, <laughs> completed and delivered, people can see. And that is why the, the president indicated that you roll out certain in phases so that you are saying that first 20, this is the seed capital. Another set of 20, this is the seed capital. Then people can go along with you. Mm. In any case, just by aside, why? Even the president's own priority or priority project, the National Cathedral, where has it got into? Okay. On a lighter and, and note. You, I think, I think that's, on a lighter that's note. A, I'm happy you added the last one. Red herring. <laughs> Absolutely. There. Red okay, herring. So, 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 but um, I think the point EDG makes is critical. No point. About, about fine. No, no not point. about the cathedral. I know about the funding. About the funding. It's not a point at all. So do we, have, do we have the money? Because it's interesting, he points out, and I remember Kojo Oponkrumah, the information minister, told yes. me that on my radio show that three budget cycles. Mm -hmm. So that means you are delivering all the 88 at the end of term of the president. Yes. Respectfully, um, with recourse to the Financial Management Act, he's a lawyer. This talk about mobilization does not even appear at all. It's not banned by law up to speak today. I know that no, this time, I, it's I, almost I, as I if... I am making a point. No, if but I, it's almost if as if... you if allowed him to flow, yes. just no, allow I'm me just to make a point. That it almost I, I, seem, seems that the nomenclature has changed. Now, they say commencement funding. I am saying, I am saying that, I've just, I just want to set a premise. Okay. And I'm saying that the doubting Thomases, okay, which my good brother, Eddie Tomoklo belongs to, okay, are not sure of where we are going to get the funds. And it's not the first time we are there. You remember when our major and flagship program, which is the free SHS, was actually proposed before even we came to power. They, even in government, said, where are we going to get the money? I don't it's, think that's true, sir, because the president did. was on hard talk, and that question was asked him where it would be funded. He could not he answer. Didn't answer. Yes, please. Differ, differ, differ. So please, let's differ. not blame even, it on the even, NDC. Differ, 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 yeah. differ, respectfully, I'm saying that <laughs> even they, the NDC, when we would propose free SHS in opposition, knowing very well that we're going to think out of the box, put modalities in place, in the eyes of the law to raise the money and make sure Ghanaian child gets education if he's supposed to or she's supposed to. They actually came out to say we could not do it. Now when we got power, our first budget inculcated therein had to do with expenditure towards free SHS. They said, oh, this would not see the light of day. Trust me, this would not travel far. To the extent that their own flag bearer, even after we had implemented, went to Cape Coast and said, look at the budgetary allocation alone for free education. was too much. Other sectors of education will suffer. Today, as we speak, free education, they want to claim credit. Same applicable to what we have today. I am saying that this ambitious project, this great project demands great thinking demands sitting in the room and preparing properly, thinking out of the box and see how we can go, we're going to fund this. Can you tell and us about doubt, the funding yes, strategy? Yes, I've just told you that, yes, he has made reference to the amount of money we put in the budget the last time, which we're moving to GIF, and through GIF, we shall be paying some 10%, 10% each to the, the contractors. The Ghana Infrastructure Fund, which was set I'm up saying. by the previous administration, which why, I remember you why, criticized. Why, why? Why? Having they criticized, even free SHS, even as we speak, they're okay. taking credit. All right, fine. So you tell us about They are taking the credit. Okay, so, so you so tell us what about the funding. They have, they, have always, they have always said that governance is a continuum. <laughs> so if you come out with an idea, and you didn't even put a seed, cap, a, a, a PESWA in it, and we have come to put money in it, and then making sure that it's going to go through an infrastructure development for all of us, wouldn't be a good one. Okay, so you tell me about so the, the funding. Point I want to the funding now is that I'm saying what the law says we should not have done. We have been able to say that no. Aside that, GIF can step in. Some amount of money being about hundred million dollars, like he rightly said, is in there. Let's give some commencement support 
to the contractors mm -hmm. to urge them on. But if, I, if you look at or you know how it operates in the construction sector, contractors after taking the contract are supposed to pre-finance the project, get to a level where they will raise a certificate, take it back, and then at that point, some amount of money will pay them, then they continue if they have to. And there are even some contractors who would take the contract and embark on the project, execute it to the end, before even with those who have the, capa I mean, the, the capacity. So the point is that if you say it's a three budget cycle, I agree. But see, this has to do with payment procedure. Why? Haven't you had contractors who have completed projects and come to tell that we have finished the project, we are not going to hand it over to government because we have not been paid. We've had that in the past. We've had that even still. <laughs> so it tells you. you still owe contractors no, no, I am saying five point no something government. billion. Tell me a government that has come and never owed so contractors. I think, so Mr. Kamal, not no. to be fair, no, to be fair, yes. I think the point we are all just mm -hmm. trying to get you yes. to get us yes. to is how will these projects be funded without the calamity of contractors going on the streets and mm -hmm. demonstrating or losing their property because they can't pay the debt? I mean, I think that's the concern. So why, not, I, the, why not give us what the... Are we delivering I, I, the projects in phases, for what, instance? What I, can say, what I can say for sure is that the government is fully committed to ensuring that these projects are executed and completed. In the same vein, the government is committed to ensuring that we think out of the box, ensure that, of course, by next year, wherever we're going to work hard to get the money legitimately to fund these projects, is going to happen. Okay, I, a need, lot of thinking, I need to bring A lot of thinking will, has gone into it. A lot of arrangements has gone into it. And I can tell you that once it's a GOG project and we are so ambitious and so ready to execute them, same where are we going to fight hard to ensure that the money comes in? You see, this talk okay, about... I'll, I'll come back no, to you to on end, that to end, because end, Let me just end. This talk about this, this talk, million. Wait a minute. This talk about we cannot do it. We cannot do Nobody it. Like I said, we've seen it before. <laughs> we've seen People have said, oh, we can't yeah. get the money. We've seen it before okay. and we have executed it. Same way are we going to ensure that the Agenda 111 is going to be completed and commissioned here in this country, okay. given the time that we have. Yes, Dr. Janssen, come in. So while Dr. Janssen is speaking, you can reflect yeah. upon the 600 million, which is already in the budget, yeah. some 36 million already paid to the architects and designers. Don't worry, that's Yes, fine. Um, <laughs> Dr. Janssen. If I, I think that two things have been discussed here, and one of them is very clear, unless maybe Eddie G has some other view. What is very clear across the board is that the Agenda 111 for the health needs of the people is a welcome activity. I think there's no doubt about it. It's a good one. The key problem now that, unfortunately, I think government and to an extent, Kama, has not really been able to convince all of us is the funding or the financing of the projects. And uh, I think that it's in government's own interest to, as soon as possible, put whatever strategies they have out there for all of us to, in quote, be fully convinced that the funding ultimately will be available. I think that is the basic problem we seem to be grappling with at this point. Mm. But I think we also need to put a few things in context. Let's not get hooked into this, in quote, 87, 88, 87, 88, because we are talking about one, one, one. And per my understanding, this is supposed to happen within the next three years. So if we take the 88 or 87 out, we still have a certain 23. That 23 includes 13 district hospitals, seven, seven regional, regional hospitals, and three, three mental health, health facilities. Yeah. Obviously, that 10, the regional hospital and the mental health facilities, most likely will cost more. Because the regional hospitals are supposed to be the secondary level care mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. Their requirements in terms of equipment and the sizes and what have you may be way bigger than a district hospital. Certainly. So there is still some funding beyond the 1.7 billion that we are all talking about that we need to get. Mm -hmm. And we think that these are some of the things that government will have to work on quickly 
and make sure that there is clarity for all of us. Would the GMA like to at least see a certain plan that demonstrates how this is done? Because, I mean, now there's a certain un unsureness about whether, and I know you said we shouldn't dwell on the 88 or 87, but at no, least... No, I'm not saying we shouldn't dwell on that. No, what I mean is... is that so now, let's not focus only on that. On let's that, remember that there's that also there a certain 23. Yeah, but what I think I would like to know is, so in 2022, how many hospitals will be complete? It's will only it government that can tell us. But mm -hmm. per my understanding of what has happened now, this 600 million is money that were captured in last year's budget mm -hmm. that have actually been allocated and disbursed into the infrastructure fund. This was from last year. Unfortunately, I don't know what disbursement or what provision we've made for these projects from this current budget. And maybe Kamal may have to tell us. No, so, but, no, just, let me just yes, in 30 seconds. You see, if you look at the mid year budget that was presented yeah. a few uh, weeks ago or days ago, sure. you notice that at Appendix 4D, in Appendix 4D, government provided the expenditure for the 2020 COVID funds. And in that 2020 COVID utilization and allocation, they had indicated that 600 million has already been utilized. No, no but that's no. the challenge uh, energy, I no. have energy, with no. that data. Energy, energy. No, energy. Energy. Uh -huh. I've been on a couple no, of programs where this has been discussed. Mm. Yesterday, John Kuma, Dr. John Kuma, yeah. who is the Deputy Finance Minister, also shared a little more light. Mm. Basically, all they sought to say was that in 2020, we made provision of 600, yeah. which has been pushed into the infrastructure fund. Of course, I'm sure it's been invested as well. Out of that, the pre-contract activities that have happened so far is 36 million. Absolutely. I don't know whether all of it has been paid or not, not, but definitely some expenditure. That's the phase practice. one of the project. No, uh, come no, on. You see, you see, no, 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 uh, uh, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> no, Dr. Hold on. No, you that. see, no, I think, I think, I think, you see, mm -hmm. I think we should just understand what has happened mm -hmm. so that we can also critique an air government to do the best for all of us. Absolutely. I think for me, that's uh, very no, fair. Okay, so no. let, so let the, key thing is that, the key thing is that <laughs> beyond what you did last year mm -hmm. by allocating 600 and starting the pre-contract activities, which for me is good because every project you need to do these things. Let there be clarity on the funding in terms of what probably GOG itself will provide this year as well and the subsequent years. And then if, let's say, the private sector or individual contractors are going to fund certain things in total or partially or whatever. Let all of it be clear to us. That way, I think everybody will be very confident. But once these things are left hanging, then people begin to, you know, come out thinking that, well, it's the usual talk and all that. And for me, that will be a disservice to the people of Ghana if we should end up that way. Because for the 101 projects, we actually need them to close or bridge that gap that we have all envisaged. Because uh, you can't have a situation where more than a third of your, or let's say about a third of your districts in Ghana don't have access to primary health care. Because the district hospital actually sits at the top of the primary health care activity. It is key. So I think that it's a good ambition. It's a good agenda that government has set itself to. But the questions that are coming up, government should do its best to explain them as soon as possible for us. Okay, let me ask Mr. Emisa if he wants to weigh in on, I know you kicked off the financial discussion, but for instance, do you know how many hospitals may be completed next year, for instance? So, if, I, if we are looking at it from, from that angle, and then and let me come back to what Kamal said, and then quote his own words. If we are not careful, you notice that we are going to over-rely on the, the, the commitment of contractors with the assumption that they are going to look for funding to complete the, the project. Now, these contractors can get the project completed without handing them over, and it doesn't make the facility functional. So our fears and challenges have been that government show commitment. Let us see where the amount or the, the cutting of the project is coming from so that we know that the ownership is, is, is from government. In any case, if even you go around to, to, to tell us that you are going to borrow money, put it into it, and then the facility runs once it's paid for it, we'll be happy. But to leave it with contractors 
who for now has not even been able to demonstrate they will be able to kickstart the project without the commencement plan from government becomes very challenging. For us, we, if we study the, the terrain and then how the challenges with the country now amidst COVID, we are of the view that for the tenure of this particular government to complete, they will not be able to complete more than 20 functional for us out of the 101. And these are the things that we want government to tell us so that the people get so committed and follow it. With the assumption that, you see, this stage or this phase, we are able to do this. In the next phase, we are able to do this. Then we encourage other governments to look up to this and then also get the rest completed for us. But we don't want to see a situation where you start all of them at a goal and they are all hanging. And then we go back to the same story that every project has a different funding source. We don't want to be hearing this uh, moving forward. So we are, we are only proposing that government shows us where the funding is coming from. We all look at it. Even in this, um, uh, this year's budget, we are yet to know whether we are going to see an allocation for these projects. And is it going to be bigger than 600 million? And where is that money also coming from? Then we look at the next budget cycle. So what we are even talking about now is from the previous budget. And then this year, we have not seen it. We are looking at next year before the president exits. So the issues are very dicey um, to talk about, but we need to speak to it. That do what you think your strength can do now. The people would appreciate it and praise you for it. Other governments take over from you, and they also look at it and then get the, uh, the rest completed. Thank but you. don't do any work. That will leave all 111 hanging. That is what we don't want to see. So for us, our projections are that they will be able to do 20 by the end of tenure of um, um, Nanado. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Emisa. Well, yes, Kamal, he's over to you. He's projected that we will be able to do 20 by the end of um, Nanado's tenure. And I want to assure you again that just as we've been able to embark on projects that people doubted we could not do, so are we going to ensure that this ambitious and all important projects are going to be completed so, as well. So Again, the funding issue, do you know how much is budgeted for 2021? You see, Jifa, we are yet to have the budget for 2020. I mean, for No, I mean for the hospital. No, 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 of course. I, obviously, we've mentioned that. Um, it's 600 EDG, from EDG, yeah, 600, 600. Yes, that's yes. what I mean. That is what we did. And that is what we are pushing into GIF for the commencement okay, so of this project. So there is but no there, addition for 2021. No, no addition Jifa, yet, as we say. Just, no addition uh, yet, as we say. Uh, uh, and I'll add just yeah. 30 seconds. You mm -hmm. see, Jifa, let's situate this conversation well mm -hmm. so that we carry our viewers through. We have been told that the 600 million is actually a 2020 yes. COVID allocation. Mm -hmm. And that even though it is captured as utilized, the utilization is actually the movement of the funds to the Ghana infrastructure investment. And that it has not been utilized in quotes. Mm -hmm. And that it is safe in an account. Can I therefore say that for the 2021 budget, there was no allocation for agenda. And I think one that's one. the point we are trying to make. And that is where but people say that. He says, he says, he says, what we just no said and spoke about. No allocation has been done we, for 2021 absolutely. as yet. So it means when the minority, the media Diffa, budget Diffa, Diffa, had Diffa, come Diffa, already. Diffa, when the minority held the press conference, they raised this matter. The finance ministry came out with a response and explained to us, okay, the allocation of this 600 million, okay, and what is actually meant for. I think that's clear that, now. That's clear. So the point is, going forward. So for 2021, we, we, is there a potential we, allocation? No. There is a potential obviously. allocation. Obviously. I don't think, I don't but think we don't there's going to be amount. We don't know yet. Okay. And no, I'm saying, no, 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 that would be for 2022, not 2022. Uh -huh. uh -huh. No, 2022. Was not, there any allocation? No, no. The point is that the amount of money that we have had in the appendix, as he rightly said, is what we're using to commence. And I said, again, that Commencement of this project, mobilization, of course, in the eyes of the law, was not even supposed to be existent. But because of this amount of money being there, and because that project is so important, then the government sat down to say, no, let us use this because we had intended to use that for health infrastructure. Let's use this seed capital kind of into it while we plan towards how to execute the projects going forward. Now the question is, where are we going to get the funding? Where are we going to get the funding? Even before the 2022 budget is written or is out, 
We are here telling government to come and tell us what is going to be inculcated in the budget towards this project. And I say, let us not jump the gun. Let us not sit here to say things that, of course, are yet to come. And obviously, we are going to see it. The project execution to completion is going to be seen with a great of respect. Monies that are supposed to be allocated for this project are going to be seen in our uh, you know, subsequent budgets, as it were. So I don't see why we have to sit here and then try to look into whatever to say, we, I propose or I assume or I uh, predict that we're going to have this amount of money in the budget towards this project. Let us wait and look at it. By November, we're going to see the 22 budget, 2022 budget, and we are going to surely be told how the commitment of government is towards these projects, as okay. it were. Dr. Yangsen, yeah, well, I, I I Mr. Emisa, yeah. Mr. Emisa projects some 20 something hospitals. <laughs> that that is his prediction. Of, well, I don't think it's unfair <laughs> to say that. No, because I'm not saying it's, it's unfair. It's, it's similar see, to when the NDC Jifa, Jifa, started Jifa. the 120 Jifa. community senior high schools. Uh, um, we all saw mm -hmm. how many were completed after. No, there were 200. They promised after 200. After the fact. And they did 47 okay, or 37. Okay, so Dr. Okay. Yangsen, no, but for me, just a moment. Edidi, I'll come to you. Second, before Doc comes here, I just want to find out Edigy. from Doc so you can do it. When you say 100 bed hospital, mm -hmm. is there any technical qualification for what constitutes 100 bed hospital? For instance, in this studio, if we are able to put this studio to host 100 bed for people like outpatient purposes, would they qualify for 100 bed hospital? Because I do know that WHO and all of those things, they have a certain level of classification. <laughs> so that you may as well build an infectious center that can provide... You are delving into ramps that are not hospital. your... <laughs> Does it in and of itself say that you have constructed 100-bed hospital? Okay, Dr. Because Yansen. of the cost Okay, so let's hurry, let Dr. Sure. Yansen make the point so that we can okay. take a so, break. So, then we so, can so, delve so, deeper so, into so, that. Well, I think that probably Kamau was trying to bring some clarity. That one... In terms of the funding, quickly, a certain 600 has been allocated yeah. from last year. This year, in truth, there is no allocation. But hopefully, three months <laughs> from now, when the new budget obviously. is done for 2022, hopefully. we may see some it's massive obvious. infusion in there. Okay. I think government needs to come out clearly. And no, tell the government us is clear. No, no, no. Come Hold out. on, okay. Mr. I think Mr. We, we, we need to get all these things clearly stated to us <laughs> so that as citizens we are happy. Because we all want the project or the agenda to succeed. Now, in terms of energy's question, you see, when we say a 100-bed hospital, we are talking about the capacity in terms of the number of, in quote, beds. Is it just the number no, of No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> when we say a 100-bed mm -hmm. capacity hospital, you are looking at a minimum 100 beds mm -hmm. within the hospital. Mm -hmm. But those 100 beds could be allocated in so many ways. Mm -hmm. There could be a pediatric wing, mm -hmm. there could be a maternal wing, mm -hmm. there could be a surgical wing, there could be that is one. Beyond the beds, you need other functional areas. Absolutely. Like administration. You will need other functional areas like say oxygen provision. So the biomedical engineering and all those bits will come in. You may need an OPD you may need a theater and all that. So it's not just about just a structure with 100 beds sitting in there, but there are other ancillary bits Absolutely. that you all need. But ultimately, when you go there, you see it. And if you want a typical example, if you go to the East right now, I think it was one of the Eurojet projects that was mm -hmm. commissioned before COVID, mm -hmm. just before COVID, I think November 2019. You go there and you see the structures there pro properly laid out. But ultimately, the bed capacity will end up that. So there's some ICU for kids. There's some two or three bed for adults, you know, stuff like that. So that is how the 100 bed will look like. It is not just a question of just putting up just because each bed, for example, if you are doing activity properly, should have provision for oxygen gas, uh, so medical gas, say, so at the point. So you go into the ward and there's a point where oxygen will be delivered and all that. So th th there are other things. You may even have to get things like uh, CSSD where you size your you know, equipment and all those. So I, I haven't seen all the details, but when we say 100 bed, 
it is that capacity with other ancillary. Okay, I'll come back there. to you still on the 100 bed because I've been looking at a document which is the Ghana Health Service requirement for the 100 bed hospitals. It even talks about the staffing yes. that is required. It's anything from some 250 no, we are not going to, go into to 600 yes. and, and over. So we'll come back to that. But it's still the key points on TV3 and 3FM. Uh, send your messages through to us. We take a quick break. We'll be right back with our guests. Thank you very much for staying with us here on The Key Points. It's been a, an interesting discussion so far. Let's take some of your messages and then we'll speak to the president of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. Uh, quite a lot of them are on this uh, subject. And this one from Aziz and Wa says, protecting the public purse is now building the most expensive district hospital at Shama at a cost of 41 million Ghana CDs. Indeed, this government uh, has not been honest with Ghanaians. Um, I'm not sure about the cost of the Shama hospital, I must say. Johnson from Accra says, the trick of the government is that they always come out with fancy, flashy programs without a clear plan and then they pick ideas from the public discussion for implementation this one from um mbabu atamale says thumbs up to you kamal dean uh, inshallah the agenda 111 is doable this government is committed to providing better health care infrastructure for the good people of this country and um julius from london says please give us one of the hospitals at nandum um, this one from Koshi says, government communication has been defective in this matter in response to the queries of practicality with prudence of policy. Nobody can be against the construction of more hospitals. The issue is about the practicality of constructing 111 hospitals in 18 months without a clear cut funding roadmap. Um, A.U. Farouk from Tamalino says, good morning. Time will tell when the 11 hospitals commence because every promise the government has made has yet to be fully fulfilled. And yes, Ghanaians must know where the funding of uh, this uh, 600 uh, million CDs is coming and how it's going to be spent on the agenda 111 hospitals. And a final message from Osman in Tamale says, President Akufuado promised to deliver 88 district hospitals in 2020. 12 months have passed and not a single one of them has been delivered. Agenda 111 is just a rehash. Regards. Uh, thank you very much for your messages. So, um, Mr. Emisa, um, any thoughts on the last conversation, which is where we are headed about what is the 100 bed hospital? Because there have been criticisms towards the NDC that, well, they built a 100 bed hospital for almost 40 million US dollars. Um, I've seen critiques that we should be commending the current government for seeking to build a 100 bed hospital for half or less than half the cost. Thank you very much, Jifa. So you agree with me that it's very difficult to um, allocate cost to projects depending on the individuals um, um, perspective and then taste. So if we say 100 bed capacity, we might have the standard which we are referencing the WHO standard. Now, a lot of things go into building. It, even if you look at the land, preparation of land, the materials you are going to use, the equipment you are bringing in and so on and forth might determine the, the cost for the project. So I believe um, the government might have done some feasibility studies and, and then and all, allocated 16.8 um, um, million to this facility. That's one I don't want to compare that to the, the 40 um, million um, dollars um, other people are seeing. But we are just waiting to look at what is in it that makes it the 100 bed capacity. We only want to ensure that it will meet the standard, the WHO standard, where um, I would perfectly agree with the expertise that um, 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 Dr. Janssen demonstrated, that we need this, this, and that. The pediatric sessions, the surgical wards, the, 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 all those things are there to make up a district hospital. And then for that matter, we have the number of beds to contain the people whenever um, they come in. So for the cost issues concerning, I, I will relate it to what kind of materials are we using that is bringing it that, uh, to that amount. What equipment are we bringing in? What kind of all those things? And even the land, if, you know, the cost in each sense might not be the same for even every district. The cost, nobody can convince me that the cost of the project probably in Accra will be the same in Kumasi and then the other neighboring um, um, uh, uh, regions and then districts. 
So in each case, I see it to be an average is the 16.8 million. And for that matter, I believe we could have some which are even more than 20 million, some which are up to about 30, and some probably less than about 16 in that sense. So I don't want to go so technical on that since I'm, I don't have um, so much expertise, but I know that you know, we cannot limit ourselves to the food standards, which we are all looking at from the, the, the WHO um, baselines. So for cost issues, let's leave it to the, to the technical people to tell us more and then we, we pick it up from there. It Thanks. could be very, very relative, I think. All right. Thanks very much, Mr. Emisa. And I'll come back to Dr. Yangson quickly on the hospital because he mentioned the WHO standard. The document I was looking at was a, a Ministry of Health document 2018-2019. Uh, is it possible that the standard is the same or it is downgraded a bit? I mean, this document came with data. It came with even the floor plan, design plan and the like. Well, what, what it is, is that there, there, there's generally, <laughs> let's say the WHO standard, uh, that is supposed to be a guide for all nations, mm -hmm. depending on your resources as a country and the level of care you want to be dealing with. Mm -hmm. These WHO standards will not bind you, so to speak. A great answer. But it sets a certain minimum parameter or basic parameter for you. So what is important <laughs> now is, as a state, as a people, what have we developed as our concept? Absolutely. And we are going to borrow, or we have borrowed a lot from this WHO arrangement to suit our own. So it's like domesticating that bigger framework document to suit the needs of your country. But in healthcare delivery, if you are going to do the best for your people, then there are some minimums you cannot go below. So we expect that when we get full details out of this particular Agenda 1-1, it, whether it's a district hospital or the regional hospital, when the full details are given, we can then do a better assessment or critique, if any, to see whether at least it meets the minimum benchmarks. Well, the president did talk about it in his speech. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I do think that this uh, that is for be... the district. But the reason why I'm asking then is then, Mr. Tamaklo, how then do you explain the criticism that the NPP is delivering a district hospital at half the cost that was delivered no, by the no, Mahama you, administration? You, you, say, you say that is where the deception is. You see, you cannot, with the greatest respect, provide 100 beds, okay, within this room, and still call it 100 bed hospital. That's not what it is, please. It's okay. not that simple. You should because, not listen to the Oh, doctor. please. Oh, come on. The it president is, mentioned yeah. that there will be a maternity. No, I'm, I'm there. He I'm, mentioned there will be no, maternity, there will be theaters. Jifa, he also mentioned that it even comes Jifa, with staff accommodation, Jifa, a radiology unit. You see, yes. The vice president organizes a forum and critiques the previous administration that he does not understand why 100 bed hospitals should call $25 million. And then even exclaim, a bay. <laughs> this was the vice president. <laughs> now, the same government now decides to do 100 bed hospital in Shaman for 35 million euros. That's $41 million. Then we say, ah, you cannot in one breath criticize $25 million for 100 bed, and then now do 35 million euros for the same 100 bed. What goes into it? Then they came and said, look, the tooling, the equipment that you'll be putting in, even who the manufacturer is, whether you are leasing, all of this thing is the reason why the Shama one is costing $35 million euros, that's to, uh, 41 million, and not 25 that you critique the NDC for. That is why it is critical in this conversation to know this particular 100 bed, where is the model coming from? Is it WHO specification? Or, like Dr. Yangtzee said, a local you know, idea of how a 100 bed hospital. If we do that conversation, then you realize that, in fact, your $60 million is like building an Atakwame house. And another person built Atakwame house course, which is four bed, you know, it's four bed. Then you also do block, four, uh, four bedroom. You cannot compare the two. So we need to know what exactly is going in today. Now, the problem is that, you see, there's so much opacity 
relative to the rollout of this particular Agenda 111 project. Are you saying it because it's being managed from the presidency? No, I am not saying it because it is being managed. You see, when things are done, for instance, from agencies of state, people can easily, you know, walk in, find out what is the nature of the design, what exactly is going into it. If I look at this scenario, you have a situation where the president, you know, chairs a committee, right? And we have been told in, the, in this particular rollout, the president chaired this committee, and at times the chief of staff does it. It is not the ministry per se that is rolling it out. It is being rolled out at the presidency. Now, question, what was the procurement methodology used? We have been told that for the design, the architectural design, it was done by one David uh, Ajay or something, the person who designed the National Cathedral Project. Question, were these architectural design processes done in a competitive manner? Because in most instances, what you do is that you invite designs, architectural design. People bring different kinds of design. Then you will indicate that, look, from all the designs are picked, this one situates within that local conversation. So I'm going for this particular architect to do this. In this particular case, we are only being told, in fact, based on the, the, the works that the architect had put online, that we have even seen that he's the one who had designed this, all the hospital projects, and it's the same design, except that the locality is different. Now, if you have this situation, you cannot now be saying that I am doing my assisting million, and so there's value for money with mine. Because you're the same person, you are doing 100 bed hospital in Shamar for 35 million euros. How come that the Shamar one is costing 35 million euros? And then the 88 is costing 16 million. The same person, it is no different government. So you need to address us on this critical difference, even in cost. Okay. That is the only way you can carry us as citizens along. Mr. Kamal, yeah. Diva. I think we've moved from cost now and from the doubt now to looking at the uh, technical aspect of the project and making com some comparisons. Let me bring Edigi back, if he has forgotten. In 2016, they earmarked some eight districts to have hospitals being built. Oh, Mr. Kamal, they are no, always no, expecting no, Deepa, 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 to go Deepa, back. Deepa, I Deepa, thought you were just no, no, launched Oh, no, no, Deepa, don't do this. Deepa, <laughs> let's have a conversation. Obviously, he makes reference to things in the past and then tell or give us the reason why he thinks he still doubt or they still doubt this project. Equally, I should be given the permission to tell Ghanaians that indeed, time passed. The very people who claim they are the best alternative to managing the affairs of this country, okay, we had seen them making certain promises and never delivered. Okay, so you, can you just So I just simply said, the, uh, what the I want to say is that not too long ago, in 2016, they abandoned some eight districts, projects, hospitals that they earmarked to build. Apart from those that they completed, the rest in Kumeu, in Wa, Formina, and all that, zero. Today, a president comes out to say no, primary health care must be given a boost. We need hospitals dotted around the country, especially in our districts. Drawings have been done, discussions have been done on how to fund it. It's going to be fully a GOG funding. We are going to make sure that we think out of the box to get this. Now we sit here, even before. The third project gets to even 2% or 1% level. We are all casting doubts. Like I said, we are focused and we remain focused and ensure that this will be done. You see, when you said to make comparison, when you said to make comparison, that yesterday a hospital was being challenged or the cost of a hospital was being challenged, and today we are coming out to build a particular hospital at a particular cost and saying, look, let us try to match that to the WHO standards. I am happy with the response um, Doc gave. The reason why I said it was fantastic. Point he made. Every locality or every society have their own, if you like, um, you know, way of building a scoop to meet a particular standard. Why? Differ. The NDC and EDG wants us to credit them for building chips comp chip compound. They want us to gloat. I mean, they want to gloat over chips compound. But they are not happy that some $17 million 
is going to be injected into providing a facility that will meet a particular standard Mr. within our jurisdiction. Mr. Abdullah, yes. you I, I have addressed problem. my question think, because the question is... Diva, what's your question? The question mm -hmm. is the $17 mm -hmm. million dollar hospital, district hospital mm -hmm. being provided. Yeah. What is the detail of the 100 bit? As we sit here, we have all seen the Is bronze. it going to be like the Shama one, which we, costs more? As we sit here. Or it has been, uh, there is a protect. Yes. Okay. So maybe the building exactly. may be built in a manner that does not engage. That's what we are asking. Hey. As we sit here, we have seen the artistic impression of the hospitals <laughs> that are going to be built, haven't we? Yes. Mm? yes. Brought out by the designer, haven't we seen it? Yes, sir. We have seen aspects looking at same, including my good brother, who is a doctor here, who has been, who is a health personnel as well, looking at same. We have actually seen again the provision of the explanation that some four million dollars out of the seventeen million dollar will go into procuring equipment for the said facility, but the actual cost for the building and structural uh, what's the name structural um, facility the setup or setup is going is to be 12 some 12 million, million. so i think that's now, the these fundamental details, these so the details fundamental, have been provided yes so the this, fundamental thing is that the 4 million dollar equipment being provided for this 100 mm -hmm. bed certainly may not be the same as Ashama. what has been provided at shama for instance if I, it is so clear that maybe if we should go into the details of what shama was supposed to be and look at the scope of work that has been provided in the contract may be different from the scope of work of this particular okay, contract. So, prob may so probably but, but there was scope, oh, scope creep maybe see, that added but on, on the a few other things. You don't just sit down and say that because Shama was going to be 35 million um, euro or dollars or whatever, then we cannot build a hospital costing 17 million dollars. That would be a very weak argument you are making. Point is, if the drawings and all the discussion that has gone on has said that, look, it suffices to say we can use 17 million dollars to build this particular facility. And aspects also set on to say, look, what we have done, it meets the standards, at least per hour standard. Okay? Juxtaposing same to maybe international standard, you can look at it, which we are in categories. Maybe you may choose to go for 300 million standard, you can choose to go for 200 million dollars, depending on your thinking, anyway. Okay? But of course, is it also feasible to have a hospital, is it also feasible to have a hospital costing 17 million US dollars? And our aspects uh, also okay on that. That's why I said, okay, I will so I, 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 to what I'm he said. I'm glad you, you said that because yeah. when I was looking at the Ghana Health mm -hmm. Service document, mm -hmm. it yes. talks about various categories. Well. There's category A, mm -hmm. there's category B, mm -hmm. category C, category D mm -hmm. for these primary health care uh, facilities. Yeah. You know, So it may be, depending on what category it is, that's what we are getting the 17 million for. The, 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 volume volume said, the volume said the devil is in the details. And I believe that, yes, what we have done so far it's, it's, it's not out of place. And like I said, they have looked into it and aspects have looked at it. Quantity surveyors who also have, you know, the, the consultants who also have eyes to determine whether this amount of money can get at this structure have all gone into this matter. Okay. What we have to do now, let us be positive at least for once okay. as a people all right. and get this project I don't think, supported I don't think and let it be is, is negative about it. They but Dr. But Dr. Yang said, and I think negative. the point I, I sought to clarify is that I know that even at the primary care level, mm -hmm. there are categories of the hospitals, A, B, C, and D. And so we don't know what this set of this set of hospital being built whether it falls under category a b c or d that then determines the cost oh i have to raise it because because it also determines your staffing situation it also does determine the staffing situation i think that for this particular agenda what we've been made to understand is that we are going to have the district hospitals you know 103 of them which will meet our basic standard as set out in our policy documents. So for me, once we are meeting our basic standards, of course, our standards also mirror a lot of the things within the WHO standards. So once we are going to meet the basic standards, let's get the detail and then we can all do it in terms of quantifying the cost. But what Kamal is saying, or what government has said for all of us to hear is that they have already put the experts in place. They have done all the figures, and this is the conclusion they have come to. What I will urge government is that in all this 101, uh, 101 you know, projects, one 
generally speaking, there should be value for money, and as much as possible, we should avoid unnecessary cost overruns. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as a country, yeah. a lot of times we do these things and it goes back to her time. There's like a lot of scope, we did, scope creep we, 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 we as need, well. Yes, we, we, we need to plow back, you know, a lot of the funds we have into the operational ends and what have you, because beyond the structures and everything, when operationally you have difficulties, then you are not also giving the service that you want. So I think that one government should take note of. The next one is the cost of maintenance. Many a time we build facilities, there are grand, you know, ceremonial activities and all that. The official dom will leave, go back to their place in a couple of years, and it's in a very Unless terrible state. Not. So there should be clear activity when it comes to maintenance. Oh, and these guidelines, we should enforce them such that it becomes mandatory to have that quarter of maintenance in our communities. No, no. Okay. Can I get uh, the question? Yeah. 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 from you? Let's get to take, no, a simple um, question from Doc, maybe so you yeah. can dovetail. Yes. You see, we are looking at a more localized conversation in terms of 100 bed you are general secretary you're so obsessed with the, this 100 bed please one. you are so <laughs> you are a member of the professional body mm -hmm. of doctors ghana medical association mm -hmm. at the point of implementation did you have a member oh. on the committee okay. you see the reason why oh. i'm asking this is that, that is you are not, talking about project again, meeting okay. specification why did it have an input from the professional body of doctors, because ultimately oh, on. they are edit, going to edit, man these edit, edit, edit. hospitals. It's critical. This is not for you. Doctor. Cannot say that this you are building hospitals for doctors that you are going without to an input from the doctors. I'm not saying it's out of place. No, but that no. So that's is, why I'm asking him. Do they have, have a rep on it? Have. It's a simple oh, question. No. To but me. the minister of health was is ah. leading this as well. Yes, but the professional body. This is a okay. A quick one, and we need to wrap up. Okay, government business. So for us as Ghana Medical Association, in terms of this specific project, we were not part of the committee. But what we have been made to understand is that the basis was based on the policy document that had already been developed. Good. And in some of these documents, in terms of <laughs> development in the past... Look, let me quickly add this. No, no, wait, let him finish. Mr. Mr. You as well. when, <laughs> when, when they were going to build the, over to whatever 2,000 they claim, Chiefs Compound, did they invite you? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That. Why you invite no, them? no. Did they, did they invite no. you? When, when, they, when, when they said they were going to forgo their salaries to build Chiefs Compound, did they invite no. you? No. So where's this question coming from? <laughs> Come on. Let's, okay, let's, so, let's, so, let's, let's, so, so just your final point. Yeah. So, so, where's this question coming from? <laughs> so, so that when the government is going to implement the policy, you go out there and be looking for CSOs to come and get it. Okay, so the my, no, 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 uh, so my last bit, my last yes, bit has last to do <laughs> ultimately with you know the operational and the staffing. Please, most of these facilities <laughs> are going to be in the district. We yeah, all know the yeah. nature of our development. It is skewed in terms of social infrastructure towards the bigger cities. Government must ensure that they put in the right motivational incentives to attract and retain healthcare professionals in there. There should also be the culture of training of the professionals who will endeavor to serve in those areas. These are very key things because now the private sector, the quasi-government sectors within the, the, the health structure are also growing and there's competition for the same kind of people. And for the districts, usually, you find government being the entity operating there in terms of the delivery of healthcare services. If we don't put in the right structures, like in proper terms of, schools yeah. and other No, beyond so all that, those bases, so you will need, you, you, you will need to have some incentives in place so that, that will ensure that it will be attractive to people. Because the truth is that you cannot compel anybody to work for a particular there. employer. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Young. Uh, Kamala, I have to stop you because you've made your point. Oh. Final point with uh, But Mr. I have my Emisha. final point to make. Anyway. Yes, uh, Mr. Emisha. I have a final point. In, in, yes, in, thank in, you very much, Jifa. So yeah. for us, we, we want to say we, we provide our blessings in support of the project to, to this government. Very good. We are only questioning that it moves in a pace where it is very healthy to, it to the government itself and the people of Ghana. Assurance and for that matter, we want to see um, some of the projects um, 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 being functional by the time he leaves office, but not the scattered lots where they are not um, completed. So we will be 
great to see some of them are raised and are functioning. And then we, we point our hands and say, in another government, these um, district facilities came into being. Then leaving a lot, excuse my language, in the bush that are not functional, that we cannot point to any. So right. we provide our support, we provide our blessings to it, and then we, we, we the beneficiaries, would wish that um, it comes to fruition. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And that's uh, where we bring this segment to an end. Our guest, uh, Edu Jitamaklo, NDC uh, legal team member, Mr. Kamal Dean Abdullahi, MPP Deputy Communications Director, Dr. Justice Youngson, GMA's uh, General Secretary General, is it General Secretary rather, and Mr. Bright Emisanyako, National uh, President of the Coalition of NGOs in Health. He's a man we'll of many parts. We'll take a person. quick break, <laughs> and when we come back, we'll take uh, our next topic which is focusing on the Akufuado government's anti-corruption agenda. Is it real or perceived? We'll be right back. <laughs>